Welcome back everyone, my name is Arvind Reddy and in this video we'll try to connect the smart contract which we have done before with the front end. So when you say front end it can be a normal web page or it can be a Android application but as of now just to keep it simple because Ethereum supports that let's stick to the web page development. So we will create a simple web page and we'll try to connect that to a smart contract. But why? Now think about this thing. When you say blockchain will be replacing a lot of different technologies, right? Companies are moving from the centralized system to distributed systems. Uh, so yes, it is changing a lot in terms of enterprise network. It is changing in terms of currency market. But what about normal companies? So let's talk about Facebook. So if you think about Facebook, Facebook has a server, right? As a user, what we do, we, we access those pages. So on our laptop, we see a screen, which is maybe a login page or the messages page or the feeds. And then those data is actually coming from the actual server. So whatever processing is happening is on the server, right? But the amazing thing is, as a user, we don't even know what technology they are using in the backend. Are they using Node.js? We are not sure. Are they using PHP, Java, ASP? We don't care. What we care is, as a user, we are able to access our data. Now, even if in future, Facebook is changing that technology, the centralized application, to a distributed system, will it affect us? That's the question. Because the moment you change the servers, the moment you talk about, uh, you know, all the processing will be done on smart contracts, on blockchain. So as a user, do we get the same page or a different page? That's the question I was having in my mind for a long time. And the answer is, you will get the same page because the front end will not change. The only the back end part is changing. So in this example, I will try to prove that. So whatever we are doing here, so if you see this smart contract, what we are doing is we are trying to withdraw the money, we are trying to deposit the money, we are, we are trying to get the balance. But then we are able to access those functionality with these buttons, right? But think about a normal application. As a user, you want to access a web page where you will do all this operation, not on this type of screen where you can see the code as well. So I want to create a separate page where I can see this. Let's get started. So the first thing you need is, uh, you have to understand certain terms. The first one is if you go to compile, we have a concept of ABI here. And if you click on details, you can see we have ABI. And this ABI has, has certain JSON codes, if you can see that. This is a basically JSON code when you expand it. Uh, so we will need this thing when you want to connect your web page with the, with the smart contract. So we require two things. The first one we need is ABI. And the second thing we'll need is if you go to run, uh, this address. I have deployed it in Ringby. So if you have not seen the previous video, I will suggest do that because we have created a smart contract. We have connected with, with this Ringby test network. So we got this address, right? So this address is important. So we need two things, the ABI and this particular address. Now, once you have that, let's get started. Oh, before that, we have, we need one more thing. In fact, we need certain things. We need a good IDE. So you can use any HTML IDE you want. You can use Visual Studio Code, you can use At Atom, you can use Sublime, that's your choice. I'll be using Visual Studio here, so let me open VS. So that's my Visual Studio Code. So if you don't have this IDE in your machine, in fact, you can use any IDE you want. Uh, you can also use Eclipse, NetBeans if you have. You also need a server because we will be running the page, right? So we got a Visual Studio Code. If you don't have it, uh, you can simply go to Google and search for Visual Studio Code download. And this is where you will get the setup. This doesn't matter, is it Mac, Linux, or Windows? It has all the options. Uh, not difficult, just say next, 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 your work will be done. So once this is done, the next thing you need is NPM because see this when you type the code you also want to run it right so you want to run your html which will be also having jquery so if you want to run that you need a simple server where you can host it you can also have a web server on the web server the actual web server or you can also have that on your local machine so you can use different uh, servers available we have light server we have http server so you can install http server here but then for that i'll be using npm so install npm so you can just go here and search for npm download and you can just go here you can download it depend upon which uh, os you have again and easy setup nothing to nothing to worry about the only thing is once you have downloaded it just go to program files go to that uh, software uh, npm or node copy the path and go back to your environment variables and set the path i hope you know how to do that it's very simple actually you can just google it now, once you have your Visual Studio and NPM ready, let's install the HTTP server. 
So go back to Visual Studio. Now, how do we install this server? So we can use npm, right? And then I have also set the path. Make sure that after, after setting the path, restart your Visual Studio. So just click on terminal, click on new terminal, and this is where you will see the terminal area. Now, based on what uh, OS you're using, if you're using Mac or Linux, you will see terminal, the actual terminal. This is a command prompt, which we are there calling terminal. Doesn't matter. In fact, before opening terminal, make sure you create a folder. So in your on your desktop or on do, in documents, make sure you have a folder where you will put this file. So I do have a folder. I've created a folder which is bank web app, a blank folder, empty folder. So you can see I have a folder which is web a bank web app. Just select that. You can see it's empty. Now, once I got this folder, in this folder, I want to create a page, right? So we'll do that, but then we, you can see we got a terminal. So I wanted that path here. So I don't want to go there, go there manually. So we got a path, we got a folder. This is where you will write a code, right? This is where I want to install HTTP server. So I will say npm install. So I want to make it globally and the software name is HTTP server. Let's say click. Now, the amazing thing is I do have this setup, so it will take less time. For you, it might, it might take more time. So once you got your HTTP server, the next step is you have to start it. So the way you do that is by saying HTTP server. The moment you say enter, it will take some time and you can see your server has started. And it is started on this URL, which is localhost colon 8080. So in order to access that, just go to your browser. I will say localhost colon 8080. Okay, you can see the server is running. That's your node server. But I want to replace this with my page. So let's go back here and let's create a simple file. Click on this and I want the file name to be index.html. You can have any file name, doesn't matter actually. And let's get started. The first thing you need is HTML tags. The type of UI we need is we need a text field where you can enter the amount and then you will be getting buttons like withdraw or deposit. I had this code with me, so just pasted it here uh, just to save time. So you can see we got an input text field and then we got P tag where, where we can show the balance. And then we got two buttons, deposit and withdraw. Now, once you have this body with you, it's time to perform operations. So let's see if this is coming as a normal text. So if you refresh now, you can see we got a different UI. In fact, the balance is empty. That's why you can't see anything. But you can enter some values and you can click on deposit. Nothing will happen because we have not coded it, right? So we, we will click deposit, it should be deposited in the actual smart contract which we are running, this one, and then we can withdraw from that. So let's do that. But then we will be performing operations on the buttons, right? So that's why we need to work with jQuery. Uh, so that's one thing. Second thing is how will you connect your web application or your web page with the Ethereum blockchain? And that's where we got this amazing library named as Web3. So if you can just go to Google and search for Web3. So this is the uh, Web3 GitHub link and they have the notes as well. So you can see it's an API between the Ethereum blockchain and your web application. So we can use it. In fact, you can also install this on your machine using NPM or we can use it as your JavaScript library. So in this example, I will use the JavaScript library, which they provide. In order to do that, what you can do is you can say download web3.js. So when you click on download, you can it will take you to the link. You can download it from there. Or in fact, uh, there's also issue with the proper version. You know, if we have to go for 1.0 or we will be going for developer version. So that's one thing. Otherwise, what you can do is uh, I will provide you the link. Serian for the uh, Web3, you can use that because that is working. I don't know, this was not working when I tried it. Uh, the download, maybe there was some bugs. You have to, you know, maybe when you are trying it, it will work because they are always doing some updates and there might be some bug when I tried it. You can try my link, which is working. So let me add those two script, one for jQuery and one for Web3. So that's done. I have to add two script here. One for, you can see one is for Web3 and second is for the jQuery. Now, once we have done that, we need to perform certain operations. Now, the first one we need is the moment you load this page, I want to show the balance. Whatever balance is there in the blockchain, right? In fact, let me just check once what is the balance I have there. So if you can go here and if I say get balance, so the current balance is 200. I want to fetch this. So how do we do it? The first thing you need is a script tag. So I will say script and inside this script. Now, if you want to connect with a contract, the smart contract, let's create an object which will hold it. So I will say contract and then uh, I want to fetch the contract details only when the page is loaded. And the way you do that is by saying dollar document ready. So whenever it is ready, let's perform the function. Okay, let's perform the operations here. So what we need, whenever the function, whenever your page is ready, I want to first create the object or I have to initialize the object of Web3. Okay, but then from where you will get this? So in fact, the syntax is very simple. It's Web3 is equal to, we have to say new 
web3 because that's how you instantiate the objects. And in bracket, we have to specify the current provider because we are using MetaMask, which is connected with the ring B. So that's our provider, right? So let's use that. So I will say web3 dot current provider. Now, depends what you are using here. So if you are using uh, injected provider, uh, you can use this. In fact, if you see, we have other options as well. So if you click on this, you can see we have one more option of Web3 provider. That's where you, you can use Ganesh as a CLI. But as of now, let's stick to current provider. Now, this object, which is Web3 here, you know, that's a confusion part, right? We have an object initialization here, and then we are creating the object. So this Web3 is actually coming from the library, which we have used above. Okay, now, once we have done this, the next thing we need to initialize is the contract, right? We have also, we are already using contract here. So we have to initialize this particular object. And the way you do that is by saying new. We have the object, which is Web3. In this, you can simply say it, which is Ethereum, and then dot, you have to say contract. That's how you create the object. So contract is a class of which you're getting object here. But unfortunately, or defortunately, this contract will ask you for two parameters. Now, if you remember, we have talked about this before. You need ABI and you need the address. Of course, right, which smart contract we are talking about? So this particular application will work with our smart contract. So you have to specify two things, the ABI and the address. So what I will do here is I will create two variables. First variable, I will say address, but from where you will get this address. So I will be getting this address from here. So go back to a smart contract, just copy it. You can see we have an option of copy. Go back here and say paste. So that's your address. The next thing we need is ABI and from where you will get the ABI. So you will get it from here. So go back to compile details and you can simply click on copy here. You don't have to exactly expand this and copy. Uh, say copy go back here and paste before the semicolon and I guess our job is done Now I should be minimizing it so that it will not Waste a lot of lines. So yeah, you can see we have address and we got ABI and we just have to pass it here So the first thing you have to pass is ABI and the second thing you have to pass is Address done. So we have done two things. Uh, ABI is done address is done. Now what next? See once we got the contract object now we have to fetch the balance in the contract how will you do that? So in order to do that, we will be saying contract dot. Now this contract will have such methods, right? We have three methods actually. So let's say methods dot. So if you want to fetch data, the method which we have used here, if I go back to code, so the method name is get balance, right? You have to call this method. So I will go back to methods. I will say get balance. Now this get balance, if you want to call it, there's a method which is named as call because you're calling it, right? And you're expecting a value. So you will say call and then here, actually this, this call will return you a promise. And if you want to uh, fetch the value, if you have to say then, and then whatever value it is returning, it will go into a function. This is basically a JavaScript code. So I'm not here to explain your JavaScript. If you want to know more about JavaScript, just go to this channel. We have a JavaScript playlist, just watch that. But here the idea is this will give you a promise. And if you want to fetch data, you have to say then. And in this function, you have to say, you can use any variable, I will say balance, whatever, whatever variable name you can use. Okay, so in this I'll be fetching the balance, right? So once we got the balance, we will assign that to this particular ID, which is balance, right? So if you want to do that, you will just come here and say dollar. Let's fetch that particular ID. And the way to do that is by saying hash balance dot HTML. And in this you will pass the balance. That's it. That's the only thing you have to do. Once your page is loaded, you just want to fetch the balance, right? That's what we wanted. Just save this. I hope this will work. Otherwise, we have to debug the application. That's what we do always. Let's refresh this page and something is happening. Can you see that? We got 200, right? Uh, that's an amazing thing, right? Let's inspect element. Let's go to console and let's see what is happening there. So I will go back here. I will say refresh. You can see there's no error and you got your 200. So that's great. You, this value is actually coming from the blockchain or the, the smart contract. So this is working, but what about depositing and withdrawal? So let's say if I say 300, if I click on deposit, I want this 200 to go to the smart contract, save the data, add a block in the blockchain, and then the value here should be 500. How will you do that? That you will see in the next video. I hope you are enjoying all the videos. I'm not seeing your comments in the comment section. Uh, so if you're enjoying, let me know in the comment section so that I will get motivated to make more videos. So that's it everyone. Bye-bye.